What's up, sup everyone? Welcome to another video. And today I have a really interesting one for you. I know Nahida's rerun is coming up. You know Nahida's rerun is coming up, and pretty much everybody is wanting to pick up either their first copy or maybe a potential constellation. A viewer from my previous video has left a comment asking for me to compare her up to Kazua. So Today, that's what this video is going to be about. I know Kazuha doesn't really have any scheduled reruns, but it's just from this person's perspective, they want to know more insights so they can better prepare themselves, right? And for other people who also have this burning question, currently between Nahida and Kazuha, as a free-to-play, as a low spender, as a newer player, who is more worthwhile to invest towards or save up for in this regard? Because investing towards would assume you already have one and want to build them up more, right? So I'm going to explain this in this video, and I hope by the end of it, you'll have a much clearer idea of what their strengths are and in what situation should you go for one or the other. It's not as clear cut and dry as, oh, this one is better or that one is better. So we have to work through the ins and out together. All right, so let's uh, take out Nahida's team and start with Nahida since she's coming back really, really soon. So with Nahida, what is her role in the game? Now, I want you guys to take a quick pause. I'm gonna pause the video for maybe 10, 15 seconds. Just think about it. What is Nahida's purpose? What does she serve as? Now, the answer for me is she's an applicator buffer at its essence. She applies a decent amount of dendro and she buffs her on-field character. Very plain and simple in terms of character design, right? So when it comes to Nahida's purpose in the game, she needs to be slotted into teams where they desire on-field EM buffing as well as dendro application. So those teams currently exist in the game in a couple forms. There are quick and aggravate teams that are centered around electro carries. There are hyper bloom teams, which are much more flexible in my opinion, that are pillared around dendro hydro, right? So a lot of these things can can be interchangeable is what I found in the Dendro teams that none of them are really locked down in place with exception to Nahida's role. There's plenty of Electro applicators, there's plenty of Hydro applicators. In fact, even with Hydro application, it comes in many ways, shapes and form. And that's where the start of this video truly should be is how difficult it is to assume the role that Nahida has, right? We have other Dendro applicators. People will say, oh, I use Dendro MC, it's fine, right? I, I never need Nahida. Nahida is kind of like a waste in terms of investment for me. And that's why they don't pull Nahida. They think Dendro MC or Kale are already plenty enough, right? Right? Even in some cases, people say, oh, my Yao Yao functions just fine. But Nahida is the best out of them all. Now, the real question should be asking, is the discrepancy between Nahida and the second best option bigger or smaller than comparative to Kazuha's second best option? Right? Because if you are, as a free-to-play low spender, you want to invest in one of these characters, you should always be looking, oh, well, if I invest into Nahida, right, can I use the second best option to Kazuha and still get by fine or is it better to invest into Kazuha and then look for the second best option to Nahida right and trust me towards the end of this video all this will become a lot clearer if I'm not making much sense right now it's okay we're still very early into the video so back to the point with Nahida right when it comes to Nahida's pros she applies a huge wide AoE of Dendro and on top of that it has a long duration so uh, some characters can benefit this more than others but when it comes to aspects of her kit it's very difficult to always take advantage of every single bit of it right so for example a team like uh, Alhatham oftentimes I find myself clearing the content even before her elemental skill duration is up so the long duration really doesn't matter but then switch yourself into a Sino team then suddenly you'll find that long duration to be very valuable on top of this vertical scale Wise, Nahida has one of the better C2s in the entire game. Her C1 is debatable when it comes to how valuable it is. I don't think it's that good, but her C2 is incredible for people who want to continue developing their Dendro team comps. So, if you guys haven't got the point yet, Nahida is a Dendro focused unit, at least for now, right? There are niche uses for her, such as uh, Meld Ganyu teams, but uh, those are far and few between, and we don't know what the future holds for EM centric uh, reactions teams and whatnot, what, where they're going to go towards. I have speculated that in the future, true Melt reactions will rely on EM. So if that day ever comes, Nahida's position in the meta will continue to soar higher. But that is only speculation right now, and nothing has been set in stone, right? That functions off of the basis that future Melt compositions will function off of burning applying pyro instead of uh, an actual pyro character like Zhang Ling spinning around applying pyro because I have videos made on that I'm not going to get into the details that's why I think it's going to happen and that's what I'm going to place my bets on so Nahida likely will get a small 
ramp up in melt teams in the future but right now not so much overall though nahida's usage is very consistent since her release into the game it's always been hovering about 70 percent and above in sparrow abyss in terms of cn uses and that's like pretty hardcore cn players so if you're somebody who find yourself always trying to clear abyss in the most efficient way possible nahida is an s plus tier she is consistently s plus at least for now right uh, same with raiden shogun consistently in the s plus tier so that's gonna be that we're gonna settle nahida right there she's a very good character you cannot go wrong with her as long as you are playing a dendro centric account as of now moving into kazuha though what makes kazuha so good in the game how come this man since his release in 1.6 and i'll say this 1.6 was his worst patch this man has only climbed higher and higher he has set records and records and records when it comes to usage application as well as overall flexibility his second best option is like so far beneath him that it, it's not even worth bringing it up and yes the second best option is venti when you have a character and your second best option to this character is an archon that is like four tiers below him wait wait, wait let me uh, s plus s so that's s a and b three tiers below him right venti is sitting comfortably in b tier with i believe 6.8 percent usage rate in the c and try hard abyss meta usage kazu i think is like 75 percent right it's like uh over a 10 times difference in usage rate percentage and it shows right what is such a big difference between kazuha and venti that so few people want to use venti well there will be people in the comments i'm sure of it saying there's nothing wrong with venti venti is fine but the true problem with venti is how annoying he is to use yes you're right in the ideal situation where your burst skill for venti lands perfectly right where you want it actually i would say even venti st starts to feel a little better however the problem is venti's burst has to shoot through the enemy and it has a fixed distance that's the problem that fixed distance is very difficult to control and the mobs are not frozen when you're using your burst animation so you actually don't have visual uh, cue of where the enemy's new positions are by the time your venti's burst animation finishes the whole field could look very different and if you cannot cc the mobs with venti's burst skill well then where that burst lands you're gonna have to play off that whereas kazuha's biggest advantage is how his burst is positioned using kazuha as the centerpiece the burst opens an entire anemo field around kazuha so you will always know where you are and where your burst is exactly gonna land because it's using you as the pinpoint location and there's a cool thing in spiral biz and against monsters is monsters always will try to find their way towards you unless they are ranged opponents melee ones will always Always gravitate towards you so even during your burst animation as long as you know if the enemy is melee or ranged you'll likely know how they're positioned and where they're gonna end up being this positional advantage when it comes to Kazuha actually makes it far easier to plan around this character and a lot of you guys have the walrus why are you talking about this this is not important it's absolutely important it is so damn crucial because think this if you were given the option to place venti's alt exactly where you want think kaching elemental skill think i'll hate them elemental skill if that indicator comes up for venti's burst skill and you can actually control where that burst ends up getting shot i swear to god venti can actually make a great comeback with just that little maybe not kazuha level because it still takes time to aim and that those precious seconds you can have the living daylight smack right out of you but i would say 30 40 percent usage rate is very very doable for venti in that scenario right so positioning and burst awareness is important now following through we're going to talk about the boring stuff which is viridescence right viridescence for nemo characters is the real reason why they're even relevant uh swirl could have very much ended up like crystallized underused and nobody wants it but because of viridescence you actually have an incredibly powerful reaction synergizing with one of the best artifacts in the game kazuha specialty will be elemental teams the reason being is elemental teams really need to take advantage of viridescence to be able to output the maximum damage available so in this sense kazuha's role in the game is incredibly diverse right any elemental based teams can run a kazuha you can run mono element you can run double element because there are instances where viridescence can actually take effect on multiple elements at the same 
time, right? There are videos online talking about this. So it's incredibly valuable. Hydro, Electro on the same team. You can shred both of them and deal extra damage through both of those elements at the same time. When a game such as Genshin continuously pushes the boundaries of DPS thresholds and DPS ceilings, Kazuha has been at the forefront of applying the strongest debuff available to us in the game. He generates a generous amount of particles. He also has a relatively low cost burst combined with a very reasonable CD on that burst. Truly a chef's kiss character here. Now to bring it all together comparative to Nahida, which one has more value, right? First and foremost, you need to decide. I know, very boring, very political answer, but don't worry. I'll give you guys a definitive answer. But first, you have to decide what kind of account you want to build. Or if you already have an account built, you need to look at that account. Like, which direction now do I want to further take this account? You want to play the more elemental focused teams, such as Ayaka Freeze. Or you want to play some sort of dual elemental teams. That's also fine. But any sort of elemental based teams, Kazuha can have a role in those teams, right? Now, if you want to take take it in the direction of Dendro, obviously you're going to be wanting Nahida. Now, here's the difference though. Which teams are more flexible and have more options right now? Elemental teams. Elemental teams are far more easily accessible in my opinion. There's far more of them around just floating all over the place and Kazuha has a role like I said in every single one of them. So Kazuha is definitely the more flexible character overall and he is very very good. High usage rate with high ownership rate. Nahida, on the other hand, has much fewer teams she can be a part of, but she is the best in best in best out of all other options in those teams. And arguably, there is less ways you can replace Nahida's role than Kazuo's role. Because think about it, Kazuo's role can be replaced by any other Animo character in the game. There's nothing really special apart from the way he does his burst placement as well as, which essentially saying is how he applies Viridescence, right? Sucrose is another great option, even though Sucrose is so far, far, far below, even below Venti in usage rate. They all kind of do the same thing. It's just Kazuo does it the best with the least amount amount of headaches, whereas Nahida actually have integral pieces of her kit that other Dendro applicators just do not have, such as EM buffing, such as the long duration and the wide range and ease of application for her Dendro. That's pretty much the main differences between these two characters. Overall, like I said, if you want a more flexible and mature play style, because all of these comps are already developed and who knows more elemental teams may come in the future Kazuha is going to be your guy right when it comes to current meta dominance Nahida certainly is likely going to take the cake for you because if you care about momentary right now and likely maybe in the future remember I talked about melt and stuff Nahida is a great investment you cannot go wrong with either of them but right now with currently existing stuff Kazuha still seems to reign supreme just because he has more team options right you can slot him into more teams Nahida is not too far behind in my opinion as the Dendro Archon she certainly has proved her worth and uh, likely will continue to do so in the future but the main difference has to still be up to you which kind of composition do you want to play? what teams are you building right because if you want to build Dendro teams where you're like oh but he said Kazuha is a better investor overall doesn't really work that way because if you want to build dendro teams you already got out hate them you got sino got all that stuff and then you pull a kazuha it's just like well it doesn't make much sense kazuha is more replaceable than nahida is however kazuha has better performance rating overall proven himself since patch 1.6 all the way until now never left the s plus tier even once that means he has had over 70 percent usage right nahida has never left s plus either however Nahida has much fewer patches to go off of when it comes to data points. Okay, that's all I got to say. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have video suggestions, ask me the question in the comment section and I'll look at it, show it, make a video like this, and hopefully it can help other people as well. If you have any more questions between these characters, make sure to comment down below and I'll see you guys next time. Till then, I urge you to stay safe. Peace, peace. Bye.